The Amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. We now present The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery and suspense, starring John Saul as the lawyer, whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. <laughs> A locale is the city of New York. The time, the present. And the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's the name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight, I'd like you to consider the cliche that runs, lucky in cards, unlucky in love, because that brings up the case of Lucky Otero, the exception who proved the rule. As his name implies, he was lucky in everything. For example, look at him now, as he takes part in a fast poker game. He's the good-looking, dark young man who happens to be dealing at the moment. All right, Blaine, how many? Two, right? Arlen Vic? Uh, you and Niven's out, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larson? I'll play these. Hmm. All right, I'll take one for myself. Uh, Blaine, you open? I'll check to the pet hat. Five blue. All right, Larson. Five and five. Well, that lets me out of Terrell. Yeah, my openers. All right, Blaine. Well, Larson? You, uh, you just took one? I just took one. Well, uh, I'll see you. Is that the best you can do with a fat hand? I said I'll see you. You don't like it, you know what you can do. Here's my five. All right, last. Well, what do you got? A full. Jacks and five. Yeah. Me with a lousy flush. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see such luck? Did you say luck, Blaine? Yeah. Sure. Up here is lucky, all right. Lucky somebody doesn't take him apart. What's the matter, Larson? You can't take it, huh? Not the way you play, up here. Not anymore. How do I play? Do I have to draw a diagram. Well, lay off, Larson. He's lucky, that's all. On his deal. On everybody's deal. He's been winning all night. Then it's the deck. You're going to take that back, Larson. I'm not taking anything back. Stay away from me. You're going to take that back. I said stay away from me, Otero. Hey, hey, look out, Otero. He busted a beer mug. And I'm going to bat it. <laughs> All right, last. Come on, take back what you said or get out. And I knock you down again. Well? All right, Otero. You win. You take it back, what you said. Yeah. All right. Get out. <laughs> What's the joke, Blaine? Hey, talk about luck. That beer mug hadn't caught in your jacket. He'd have torn your throat out. Maybe he won't be so lucky next time. What do you mean by that, Lark? You'll find out. You don't have enough, huh? No, all right. No, you don't. <laughs> let him go, Otero. Sure, I'll let him go. Well, let's get back to the game. Who's dealing with it? I think I've had enough for tonight, Otero. Nobody wants to play, huh? What's the matter? It's still early. Well, well, it's just, we know you're on the level, but with your luck... luck. Uh, everybody says luck. I study the percentages, that's all. All right, the percentages, but I just can't see myself playing with a guy you know you can't beat. Uh, let's pay up and call the night, huh? Well, all right, if that's the way you want it. It's a profitable night for me. I just uh, thought you boys might want a chance to try to win back part of what you lost. Win back? <laughs> but, Tara, you know the percentage is better than that. Hello, Hardwick. Ah, oh, hello, Tara. Well, you don't seem happy to see me. 
Well, it's no way to greet one of your best customers. There are other bookies in town. Why not give them a whirl? How do you like that? Nobody wants to take my money. Take your money. <laughs> That's good. You won't take any more bets. Not yours, Otero. This is very fun. You know something, Hardwick? What? The luckiest thing that could happen to me would me put to have a little bad luck for a while. Oh, Otero. Come in. Thanks. Eh, uh, well, then, how would you like to make some easy money? Hmm? Doing what? Uh, it's like this. I'm getting a reputation in this town. Everybody is steering clear of Lucky Otero. Even the big boys are showing the feather. They say I always will. <laughs> you do? I wanted to hear you say that because then you'll like my proposition. Go on. Here is five grand. I want you to place it with George Hardwick for me. I'll tell you the horses to play. If we lose, it doesn't cost you anything. If we win, I give you a cap. That's out the cash. It's a deal then? Deal? With all those aces in my hand? <laughs> what would you call it? That you, Lucky? Yeah. It's a little late. I wonder what was keeping you. Hello, baby. I, I stopped off to see a fellow. We made the deal. Oh, that reminds me. I have a deal for you. You have? Yeah. A man phoned you today from a publishing company. Publishing company? What do they want with me? Well, they're putting out a book on mathematical chances, how to win at games. You know, things like that. Oh, yeah. Well, they want to use your name in connection with it. <laughs> and some of your experiences. Seems you're getting to be famous. Oh, you said there'd be good money in it. No, I'm doing all right. Why should I bother with something like this? Well, I... I, I just thought... No, I'll do the thinking for this family, baby. All right. Oh, no. Don't look like that. Like what? Baby, you know I'd do anything for you. You want me to call that publishing fellow? All right, I call him. Oh, it doesn't matter. I tell you what matters. Everybody says I'm lucky. Well, that's right. I'm the luckiest fellow in the world. Because I got you. Only sometimes I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? Tell me something, Rick. I want this strike. Yes. Are you happy? Right. Have you asked him? I got to know. Yes, I, I have. Sometimes I think maybe you are ashamed of me. What on earth gave you that idea? More things you say. Like just now. I think you don't like a husband who is just a gap. I mustn't think that. Well? Of course it would be nice if you... Did something. That is, I... I, I thought so. Oh, it doesn't matter, really. I, I was only talking. That's right, baby. Only talking. And you know something? You said a mouthful. One by telling me. Hello, Hardwick. Oh, Blaine. Just the boy I wanted to see. Come into my office, okay? You know Hollenbeck, don't you, Blaine? Yeah. Hi. Hello there, Hollenbeck. You know something, Hollenbeck? Blaine's doing all right for himself. He's taken me for 30 Gs in the past week. Uh-uh, 35. Right, Blaine. Correction. Thirty-five. I'm running with luck. Yeah, so you are. But not yours, Blaine. Huh? I got a funny hunch you're fronting for somebody. <laughs> would I do that? You would. And I got a funny hunch who it is. You have? Yeah. A terror. <laughs> That's very funny. I thought you'd appreciate it. 
Before you laugh yourself to death, let's get a few things straight, huh? Yeah, let's. So first of all, get this straight. You're way off base, Hardwick. I hardly know Otero. Allenbeck says different. He was in the game with you and Otero the night last in Bluey's top. He says you and Otero are real chumming. So I play cards with Otero. Lots of people did until they learned better. That doesn't mean anything. You are on his payroll, aren't you? You're calling it. I was. Now it's your turn. <laughs> I'm not talking. No. <coughs> hey! Hey, we off. That's a new shirt. Then it'd be a shame to get blood all over it, wouldn't it? Look, look, I, I don't know a thing. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> okay, okay, lay off. I'll talk. Well, uh, yeah, Hardwick, you're right. It, it's a tarot's cash. Thanks, pal. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Malone. This is Lyman Otero. Not lucky, Otero. That's right. Well, I've been reading about you. You're becoming a legend. Well, that's why I want to see you. Somebody's trying to destroy the legend. Don't worry, Otero. They can't keep a good legend down. When can I see you? Oh, uh, well, uh, just a second. Uh, let me look at my appointment book. All right. Well, can't you put off a haircut? It's important that I see you. Not a haircut, Tom. I'm taking a manicure to lunch. Oh. Two, three, I'll be in four. With all the people I know in this town, you'd think I could find somebody to pick that bargain ticket. Oh, well. Uh, 315, attend forum on current affairs. That's Tony Paul. 430, see knuckle. I'm afraid that does it, Otero. I'm booked all day. No, I'm not joking, Mr. Malone. I want to see you. Uh, what are you doing now? Uh, nothing. How long will it take you to get here? Ten minutes. Come on over, then. I'll be waiting. Thank you, Mr. Malone. Goodbye. Oh. Hello, I didn't hear you come in. Hey, what's the idea of... No. And now back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Otero said he'd be over in ten minutes. I waited ten minutes. I waited twenty minutes. When I'd waited a full thirty minutes and still no Otero, I looked him up on the phone book and called him back. Don't tell me. That sounds like Lieutenant Brooks. Don't tell me. That sounds like the amazing Mr. Malone. What are you doing at Otero's, Brooks? Playing for chasing. No, look, I'm serious. What do you think I'm doing, Malone? I'm with homicide, ain't I? Well, who's been homicided? Otero. How do you like that? I'm unemployed again. Was Otero your client? Prospective. What do you want with him? I can't tell you. Legal immunity? No, I just don't know. He didn't say, except something about somebody trying to destroy the legend. Huh? Oh, skip it. I want to talk to you, Malone. How soon can you get here? I can't. I got a date. Break it. With a manicurist. Cutest little doll who ever clipped a hangman. I'll clip you if you're not here in ten minutes. But look. Goodbye, Malone. Lieutenant Brooks, you wanted to see me. Yeah, come on. Next room. Why? I want you to talk to Mrs. Otero. Uh, Mrs. Otero, this is John J. Malone. Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Otero. Mrs. Otero, Malone tells me your husband wanted to engage him. You know what it was about? Yes. What? Well, some people were going to write a book about his system of working out percentages. Yeah? Well, Mr. Larson, Newt Larson, began spreading stories that my husband was a cheat. 
publishing people heard about it and they didn't like it. My husband threatened to get hold of Mr. Larson and give him another beating. Another? They'd already had one fight, but I convinced my husband that fighting wouldn't do any good. I, I persuaded him to go to you, Mr. Malone. I, I thought we might be able to sue for defamation of character. I see. Well, uh, thanks, Mrs. Otero. We won't bother you anymore now. That's all right. I want to help in any way I can. If you can only find who killed Lucky. We will. Come on, Malone. Bye. Right. Goodbye, Mrs. Otero. Sussman, send out a call to pick up Newt Larson for questioning. You yeah. know, Brooks, there's one thing that puzzles me. What's that, Malone? When a terror said destroy, what did he mean by it? Defamation or murder? <laughs> Maggie, I thought I told you I'm out. Miss, I'm not Larson here to see you. Oh, well, uh, well, I just came in. Tell him I'll see him right away. I already did. That's what I call efficiency. To show my appreciation, you get a raise, effective tomorrow morning. Why, thanks. But first, you get choked to death, effective tonight. Come in, Larson. Hello, Malone. i got to talk to you. Talk. Everybody knows I didn't like Otero. I figured him for a crook, and I said so. But with him murdered, I'm a natural when the law starts looking for suspects. Jack? I hear by the radio the law is looking for me. Jack? I didn't kill Otero. That's one I don't check, not yet. Well, check on it. Maybe I will. There are plenty of other people who could have done the job. For example? Otero's wife. His wife? She seemed genuinely upset by his death. What'd you expect her to do, laugh it off? It looked like the real thing, no phony hysterics. He used to be on the stage before he married her. She's had practice. Why would she kill him? I had an idea she always figured she was just a little bit too good for him. She married him? She had no. Now she's got it without him. Hmm. Well, I'll make a note of that. Where else do we look? You might try Dick Blaine. Dick Blaine? How did he fit with Otero? I don't know for sure. But lately he's been hanging around with Otero a lot. He ought to be able to sing something. All right, I'll try him too. You'll probably find him at Smokey's Tavern. He usually hangs out around there. Mm -hmm. Well, see what you can find out, will you, Malone? It'll help you defend me. Who says I'm going to defend you? Well, what do you think I gave you those reads for? I've been wondering. Look, Malone, do you want the case or don't you? No. Otero was going to engage me against you, but he never got around to it. Well, I suppose I'm free to take you on. I'll think it over. Well, check on Blaine and Rita Otero. It may help you make up your mind. I'll do that. And then if I'm picked up, we'll be that much ahead. If you're picked up, you're going to give yourself up. No, thanks. I thought you wanted me to defend you. Not on those terms. Now, don't be a jerk. I'm not taking any chances. I want to see what you find out first. Yes. Yeah. Get Lieutenant Brooks on the phone, Maggie. All right. Have a nice chat with Lieutenant Malone, but don't expect me to wait. Come back here, Larson. Think I'm crazy? You're putting on a good imitation. Now, listen to me. I'm telling you to stay here. And this gun is telling you I'll give the orders. And it relieves you of any responsibility of letting me go. So maybe you'll still do what I ask. So long, Malone. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Well, what'll it be? Nothing, thanks. I'm not drinking today. I'm uh, just uh, just looking for somebody. Uh, how, how do you like that? Not drinking and he takes up space at the bar. So what? It's not crowded? Right you are, buddy. It's deserted as a poor relative's funeral. And Friday afternoon, too. Place ought to be jumping. You know, I got a theory. Not now, Merton. Who told you my name? Nobody. I didn't think so. It's not Merton. Oh, well, I just... Joe, just plain Joe. How do you do, Joe? Not bad. Now, like I was saying, I got a theory. Sorry, I haven't time for theories today, Joe. How do you like that? I got to listen to other people's troubles, their ideas, their, philo their philosophy. But has anybody got time to listen to me? No. Look, there are only three people in here. Is one of them Dick Blaine by any chance? He don't want drinks. He don't want conversation. But I got to answer questions. Well, two fish make it any easier on you. Try me. Okay. That's Blaine just going out the door. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. I'll be seeing you. Hey, Blaine! Wait! Look out! Hello, brother. 
tackled you just as fine. What, what happened? <laughs> well, I spotted the Tommy gun looking out of that car as it went by, and I was looking your way, so I tackled you. If I hadn't your name, it'd be signed on that that dotted line of bullet holes in the building behind you. Oh, well, uh, well, thanks. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Look, uh, I want to talk to you. So uh, let's go somewhere where we can talk, huh? Before your friends decide to do a repeat. Blaine wanted to go back to the bar. He needed a drink. But I figured we'd better get out of that neighborhood fast. I took him to my car and we started off. Have you any idea who it was that sprayed lead at you just now? Yeah, who? George Hardwick. Why? He's a bookie. He didn't want to handle Otero's bets, so Otero had made me a front for him. Hardwick found out. Made him sore. Sore enough to want to kill him. Sore enough to threaten Otero. I knew about it, so he could have wanted to shut me up. Right, it's worth looking into. By the way, did, uh, did Otero know Hardwick had found out? I don't know. I haven't seen him since Tuesday noon. And that was before Hardwick had caught on. Ah, uh, well, looks like I visited the Hardwick in order. I'll call Lieutenant Brooks to meet us there. As long as Hardwick likes to play with guns, it might be a good idea to have the law handy. That's right, Lieutenant. I did threaten our town. I was going to give him his lumps, but I didn't intend to kill him. Don't tell me it was an accident, Hardwick. It wasn't anything as far as I was concerned. I didn't have anything to do with it. All right. You're a witness, Malone. Hardwick, uh... When did you first get the idea Blaine was fronting for Otero? The day before yesterday, when I paid off Blaine. When I added up his winnings, it looked way out of line for his usual kind of play. I see. So when Blaine came back that night, I convinced him to admit that he was working for Otero. Blaine? Yeah, Malone? Why'd you go back to Hardwick after you'd been paid off? When I gave Otero his bill, he gave me another list to play. So I went and placed the bet for the next day. Well, then, Hardwick, you should... Look, just... I've answered all the questions I'm going to. You've got me for making book. Isn't that enough? I don't know anything about the murder, so lay off. Just one thing more, Hardwick. Where have you been this afternoon? Right here. All afternoon? All afternoon. Who's been here to see you? Nobody. Where are the keys to your car? I thought you said just one thing, Malone. It's all part of the same thing. Now, where are the keys to your car? In my pocket. Why? That's the black Cadillac in front of the building, isn't it? Well, what if it is? Nothing, except the radiator's warm. The car's been out. Who could have been driving it if you have the keys and nobody's been to see you? Well, I... I, I... You better come along with me, Hardwick. And don't reach for that gun. He's got a whole squad outside and they'll swarm all over here at the first sound of a shot, so be careful. You wouldn't want them getting mud in your carpet now, would you? Come on. I want to call a lawyer first, Lieutenant. Malone's a lawyer. I've got a client, Brooks. Lawson. Yeah, I better get in touch with him and tell him we're on the home stretch. You bet we are. We've got Hardwick from making book, attempted murder, suspicion of murder. Oh, let's not overdo things, Brooks. Well, what's that, Malone? I hate to see a fellow make a pig of himself. Cut out that double talk, Malone. Well, uh, two of those charges ought to be enough to hold Hardwick for a long time. Why not drop the third? Suspicion of murder? Yeah, since you can put the cuffs on the real murderer. Oh, I can? Well, thanks for telling me. All right, where do I put him? Well, Blaine's waiting patiently. Why not try him? Me? Yeah, that's right, Blaine. You're the one who killed Otero. Well, Brooks, what are you waiting for? All right, Malone. I sat tight while you stuffed your face. Now, how about you making with explanations? It goes like this. Today is Friday. You're amazing, Mr. Malone. Mm -hmm. You know what day it is? That's on account of a bartender told me. He was beefing about the rotten Friday PM business. I have a theory. So did he, but I didn't wait for it. So today is Friday. Yeah, which means the day before yesterday was Wednesday. Friday? Thursday? Wednesday? Well, what do you know? We can count. I didn't play hooky that day. You know something, Malone? We're getting absolutely nowhere fast. We got into Wednesday, and that's the day Hardwick said he paid off Blaine. Yeah. And Blaine said he gave the money to Otero. Mm-hmm. But earlier, Blaine had told me he hadn't seen Otero since Tuesday. So I knew he was lying. Mm. He never turned the money over to Otero. He kept it for himself and then killed Otero so he wouldn't have to pay with Larson shooting off his mouth about a tarot and Hardwick wiped at him, too, I guess Blaine figured nobody would be looking his way. That's it, Brooks. 
And Hardwick tried to wipe out Blaine because he was afraid Blaine would mention Hardwick's threats to Otero. But since Hardwick didn't kill Otero, what was he worried about? He wanted to avoid investigation. He knew once the heat was on him, it would uncover his bookmaking activities, which is just what happened. I'll finish a copy and let go. I'm finished. Right. I'll match you for the check. No, thanks. I'm not a gambling man. Look what it did to Otero. He did all right. Oh, I just got himself killed, that's all. Even his luck couldn't stop Leth. Oh, I don't know. Seems to me he was lucky even then. How do you figure that? Haven't you seen today's paper? Another high cost of living item. Beginning tomorrow, the price of funerals goes up. Otero got in just under the wire. How's that for luck? Good night, Malone. And now, once again, back to the amazing Mr. Miller. Well, no doubt about it, Otero show sure was a lucky stiff. Next week, I'll tell you about a stiff who wasn't so lucky, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. The Amazing Mr. Malone is a Grace Gibson production starring John Saul as John J. Malone and directed by Lawrence H. Sessler.